There we go. We're live. Welcome back, everyone. My name is Lee, also known as Osiris, and I'm joined by my co-cast Scott S9 Vibes. As always, this is week three of the Poker Balls podcast. Hope you're all doing good. Scott, how are you doing, mate? Any job with tea? I am doing excellent. You know, good weekend, good bit of relaxing. I'm excited for the upcoming weekend because it's EUIC weekend, baby. Um, it is. So, yeah, no, I'm good, mate. How you doing? I'm all right, mate. Happy Easter, good. by the way. Happy I'll Easter. Have happy late Easter. I've been I've been munching on my on my mini egg, mate, as we've been talking. So, you know, I am full of chocolate, and you know, what more <laughs> could you want in life? Exactly, <laughs> full of happiness. <laughs> Yeah, I'm all right, mate. Yeah, I'm staying off the chocolate, trying to fit in a suit. As you know, I'll be casting this coming weekend at EUIC, so I've got to fit in the suits. So I've got to have had to uh, been, have been a been good. I haven't had any chocolate eggs over the weekend, and uh, no egg hunting for me. But uh, no, I'm all right, mate. A bit tired because travelled to my parents over the weekend for the Easter weekend. So family, it was nice. But saw that know, video grind though. I see. Even the video when you're away. in the uh, the living room, yeah, yeah mate, my parents' so, living room. People loved it, mate. I, there was Absolutely one brilliant. It. There was brilliant comment. Someone was like, "It's got the 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 yellow color of the room." I can't remember exactly what they said, but it reminded them of the like the yellow tint of Breaking Bad. You know, the the yellow filter that Breaking oh, Bad yeah, had yeah, on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at the, nice. the at the whites for the weekend, but um, yeah, all right, mate. Um, yeah, so hopefully after today get rested up and then i'm traveling down to london tomorrow night so because we've got rehearsals rehearsals thursday and then the event starts friday so it's all go excellent so if i don't fit into my suit i don't know what i'm gonna do mate because there's no way i'm losing i mean could we go extreme like snorlax onesie snorlax onesie I should have worn that today. Should have worn it today. I missed opportunity. Do you reckon if I do that, like, how much, <laughs> if I don't, I'm genuinely here. Like, if I don't fit into the suit, do you reckon I could do that thing where people wrap like bin bags, wrap, like tape them around like everything and just get into a sauna for like 12 hours and then I'll just melt, melt away and then I'll get into them? <laughs> that sounds horrible. It does sound horrible. That sounds so bad. Might work, right? Might. You know, don't worry about it. You'll get in, you'll get in fine, mate. Okay. <laughs> you get in fine. And if you don't, I can just squeeze you into it. Yeah. I mean, I'm actually, I'm going to give my, my good friends, uh, Poker Sports, a bit of a shout out tonight because they sent me this amazing t shirt ages ago. I, I don't know if you've ever seen it. I'm a dozo bozo. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, big shout out to Mike and the crew over there and a big thank you to them. I've just got my my jacket up because i'm a bit cold it's cold here today so but um repping repping the dozo bozo shit which is nice um that was such a tangent as well but well, uh, really i don't run into any don dozo this weekend to be honest with you you might do mate but i think you'll be all right i think you, you'll do good we're all going to be rooting for you on the podcast mate you have to you're representing the podcast I thought, what, did I, what did i say i called it didn't i last last episode when i'm on the main stage It'd be great because, you know, if you can, you know, if you cast a final as well, it'd be fantastic because then, you know, we'll be on the, we'll just be like this, but in person then. That would be amazing. I'd be like down. That'd be good. I'd rather be the one that give out the trophies and then I could hand it to you and be like. Yeah, true. Congratulations. True. Fingers how crossed. Did you, how did you look out this much over a weekend? <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking, mate. You're going to do great. I will be rooting for you for sure. I no, really I want you no to do well. I have no help from you at all. This was all me. Nothing to do with you. I actually I mean, haven't really given you much help, mate. You have nah. been grinding on your own, so it's all off your own back. I'll try and give you as much help as I can. Nah, but You, you know, always give me the support that I need. I'll be inside man. That's what we'll do. Yeah. <laughs> Just be like, what, why what's Scott been on stream it? every game? <laughs> every round? What's going on? I don't, I don't new, understand. New it's face just, of it's just so good. New face of VG. Yeah. It'd be good, mate. No, you'll like do Unites, fine, mate. Unites there as well, which I'm really excited for because we haven't really yeah. seen Unites since Wild, which is no. excellent. This is going to be really cool. It's going to be an epic event. Right. I think it's going to be really big. Uh, go TCG, Unite, VG. It's all go, mate. So it's all good. It's, it's all good. It's going to be Talking fun. to go, 
Talk I know we, we touched on Go last week, but the drama seems to only have escalated because people <laughs> are really not happy about this um, these changes to the uh, remote raid passes. Um, You're going to have to fill me in because I've been in the bubble. The, you've been the, in the bubble. The, the bubble of the Northeast, so I haven't really had any contact with the social world as much as I normally do. I don't know what's been going on. Tell me in the viewers, the viewers or the listeners. Well... Uh, where has it gone? Joe Merrick has posted about it because they've been doing some. I mean, not just Niantic. I mean, there's some, some interesting things going on this this weekend with um mm. with Pokemon. Um, but Joe Merrick was tweeting. Um, Joe Merrick is the guy who runs Herbie, uh, that was a very useful Pokemon website. If you guys, I'm sure you guys have been on there at some point. Um, he was tweeting about how um he doesn't support it at all. I'm just trying to find the tweet and get it brought up. Um, but I, reading on Reddit, I mean, as we said last week, people are heavily boycotting it. I mean, I've read a lot of, I've read a few articles um, of people talking about how like, like disabled people, for example, the remote raids really help them sort of connect with other people. And, uh, you know, there is that side of it, I guess that, they also didn't consider, I think they also approached, apparently what happened was on some of these articles I was reading, um, they went to a lot of Pokemon Go creators and they asked them for feedback and they gave them loads of feedback, um, you know, what they thought and what they you know thought was bad. And this was one of the things that I, I don't think they agreed with, but obviously they just didn't listen to. Um, so yeah, lots of people were still angry about it and... You know, as we said last week, we, you know, we both maybe naively said, you know, I guess they're kind of trying to, well, not naively, but I guess they're trying to, it feels like what they were trying to do maybe is that encourage people to go outside mm. um, by limiting the amount of rate right, right you can have and also increasing the price. But it it just doesn't feel like that is the general consensus from people. Like, I think, I don't know, I think the biggest thing from what I read, yeah, I've just found it, is that for people, as you mentioned last week, there's loads of people that just live in the middle of nowhere that love playing Pokemon Go and just can't because they just don't have, a, exactly, don't have <laughs> any Pokestops or even just like one mm. or something. And so I think particularly in the US, I'd imagine that's a big problem because in a lot yeah. of rural areas, there's probably nothing for miles. So... I guess in that sense, it makes a lot of sense. I'm just going to send you the tweet now that... Um, I think when you mention as well about like people with like disabilities or, you know, anything that does affect them being able to kind of go out and do, you know, do the norm, like just go outside and play like, you know, like other people, if they can't do that, then it's, it's, it's not really that fair, is it? When you kind of look at it on a broader spectrum like that, it does kind of punish those people for like in a, in a way that it really it shouldn't um, i think i think the, one of the biggest problems is fortunately with a change like this you're never going to be able to please everybody um you know any change you know to do with anything you're always gonna upset one party but it just feels like this this change is up affecting more people than they originally realized and it, it feels like it's becoming more apparent why they're doing it rather than you know because yeah. I felt like it would have fluttered away at this point, you know. I mean, like I said, it's had a lot of attention, even Joe's tweet, and I've seen a lot of stuff on the subreddit, like they people really want to boycott it. Mm. Um, and, you know, I guess it, it, it is it's true. Um, what is it? Let's, see, let's, let's read what he has in here. Putting my support out with fellow at Pokemon Go at players as plan changes to remote raids and the game in general over the past year have been very bad, not just for the general player, but rural and players with reduced mobility. Please listen, Niantic. And then they go on to these points as well. Uh, there's a huge letter here. I don't know if we want to read this out or if we just link this down below, mate. I don't it, know. It has. I think we can just quickly look at the points. It says it covers the main points. It says rural trainers who lack adequate locate, local community support, which, you know, is basically what we just said. Yeah. Trainers with disabilities also can't that's go the, I think that's the big that's the one, you one. know. Yeah. You want, to be very you want it to be inclusive. Right? Yeah, 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 Pokemon yeah. has to be inclusive, you know. That's... The big things about Pokemon, you know, it's something everyone can do. And I think 
when you look at it a bit more in depth, like, you know, we, you've said already, you know, we looked at it a bit naively last week and I think it definitely like more like not thinking about it enough from my end, at least think like just overlooking that and thinking, uh, yeah, it's a way for them to get people outside. But then you think, what about the people that actually genuinely can't, you know, you've got to kind of consider them and they're, they're part of your, you look your customer as well. So you've kind of, you, yeah, you've got to take everyone into consideration when you're making these changes. So, no, I, I mean, it, also, there's some other good things here. Tr- people who have social anxiety, yeah, I would imagine that maybe a lot of people who play video games do suffer from social anxiety. I know I do to some extent, not mm. as bad as some people, but some people really do struggle with social yeah. anxiety. Um, people who work night shifts because apparently a lot of raids happen during the day, sorry, day shifts. Um, raids happen during the day, so they can't take part, um, yeah, if they're working during the day. Or at night, and then also single parents who have children um, can't play as well necessarily uh, if they don't have the time. So I guess that all makes sense. To be honest with you, um, I was reading underneath. Yeah, but it's a bit blurry. I don't know why that one isn't coming yeah. up as good. But, but yeah, it's it's crazy to me. Um, well, at least it is now that we think about it more. I also um, I'm going to drop a like on that just to support it because you know I think yeah. I do. I, I agree with it. I think there's some good points there. And there was also this that happened recently. I'm just going to send it to you again as well. Okay. So there's an app called Campfire. I don't know if you've heard of it. It was made mm-hmm. by Niantic as a companion app for Pokemon Go mm-hmm. to help people meet up in the community and play Pokemon Go. And recently, people have been getting robbed um, when responding to Campfire Rage Flares. Um, which is terrible obviously um, and now people on top of like all this raid stuff that's happening now people are too afraid to use this app because apparently it was really popular um, in the community for finding people to, to raid to do raids with it's more about community raids um, is what is what the app was used for Yeah, and it, there's been loads of cases of people getting robbed this is ridiculous that is awful, isn't it? Absolute assholes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, How is that even like... Is it, uh, it, it just, yeah. I have g- no words. No words. Yeah. Word. yeah. But, um, Bad time to be a Pokemon Go player. Yeah. Or enjoy that, you know? I know, yeah. Niantic aren't doing themselves any favours at the minute in the slightest with all of this the, stuff the, as well. The thing but, is as well, like, you feel like Pokemon has, I mean, unfortunately, it's not directly, it's run by an antic, right? But the game, you know, the game is proven to remain popular. So, and it can continue to be popular, but they need to stay on top of shit, stuff like this, because, you know, you know, it has done well, especially like even the competitive scene, you know, Pokemon Go is getting really big. Mm. We've talked about it, how it could be even bigger than the video game, because it's, again, back to the whole accessibility. It's more accessible to the general public, the people that aren't necessarily super into playing competitive, like yeah. on the Switch or even playing the card game. Pokemon Go is a lot easier to pick up. I know a lot of people that just play Pokemon Go, but don't really play the main series games at all. And so it's something they need to get sorted out quickly, really, because it's just yeah. going to annoy a lot of players you'd imagine they will as well because like knowing pokemon's stance on any sort of bad press they they're gonna it. come down on this so hard you would you would imagine they'll come down on this so hard with niantic and you know they they don't they have a line pretty much if you cross that you need to you, it, there needs to be resolved with it and you know i mourn about and you mourn about the raids and how the performance of scarlet and violet but it's a totally different level you know to this sort of thing which is can we just just this is really sorry i just had to touch it while i remember but i've mm. had some massive problems just playing online in uh on on the online ladder in game where my game's just like not i'll go to terrestrialize my pokemon and the game just goes the screen just dims and then for like a minute nothing will happen and then all of a sudden the pokemon will appear terrestrialized and the game will run like super slowly for another thirty seconds, and then it'll be fine. That's weird. I don't Did you see I just, that tweet uh, from Pengi, uh, Stefan. Uh, he put over the weekend, and he had that weird glitch where everything on the opponent's side disappeared, and he was yeah, 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 and yeah. He could still attack. 
And his moves weird. were still happening, but there was no Pokemon in the field at all. It was so yeah, weird. Yeah, because I also kept getting um, like no animations when I was playing. I still get it. So what I did was I reset my Switch. I turned it off, closed the game down, turned it on. That terrestrializing glitch thing went away because I only have one I terrestrialized. But I still get, because I was getting before, like the no animations for moves. Like, so I don't know what it is. I mean, it's as we as we mentioned, Pokemon. <laughs> Yeah, many problems. So weird. So weird. There's an I update coming at the end of April, so hopefully that solves some of these things. But it better. It has to. Getting back to Niantic, though, I think, yeah, Pokemon will probably be coming down quite hard on them. And yeah, I think great for the community that everyone's kind of getting together and, and, and pushing against these changes. And hopefully it gains enough traction for Niantic to finally kind of sit up and do something about it. Uh, to accommodate everyone so we'll keep you updated though as we go forward of course on the podcast with anything um that does kind of come from this the campfire stuff i'm just uh, speechless with mate speechless no i couldn't believe uh, when i saw it today i was looking at it, i was like what the hell yeah i just hope people that yeah, are all right it's, it's uh yeah. it's awful awful mate but um yeah so that was a nice way for us to ease into the pod today mate yeah pretty brutal stuff um <laughs> On a on a lighter note, and maybe not a, a lighter lighter note, we did we didn't get to cover it last week because we had to record the pod a few days earlier, so we missed being able to include it in last week's news. But we did get an update with uh, a date for Pokemon Stadium coming out, and uh, it will be coming to the Switch. I think it's coming tomorrow, mate. I think it's the twelfth. You know, what? Up my head. Oh, people think. don't seem that fussed about it. When is it coming? I'm sure it's the twelfth. I'm sure it's twelfth. Uh, I'm not seeing any date this, there. This article doesn't say, but um, I'm pretty sure Pokemon Stadium is coming. I'm sure it was the 12th. I should have been prepared for this. I'm sorry. I just wanted to put it in. Right, Pokemon Stadium. Up. You look and I'll talk about it. Anyway, Pokemon Stadium finally got its announcement date for the Switch. It will be coming onto the expansion pass for uh, online services. It will only be Pokemon Stadium 1 at the moment, but there is some bad yeah, news. April 12th. Caveat. 12th. So we cannot transfer right, yeah, the Pokemon the over. Yeah, that's the big this caveat is... to it. It's a real pain. And it did say that in the initial trailer, but they kind of doubled down on it in this new trailer. And it's I didn't realize how big of a deal it was, but from the comments I read on your video, a lot of people are like, this is the only reason I play Stadium. Like, yeah. rental teams are boring. Like, you, the whole point is. You oh, the Pokemon. Pokemon are rubbish. They're rubbish. It's like they... they Unless they're waiting tear. for home to come out, but then it just, it would... You feel like they would say that, you know, until home comes out or something, once home is available, but home seems to be such a bloody hot topic in the air right now, so... Mm. They've got a mod in Pokemon Stadium. There's the, the Do Duo or the Do Drio mod, which is like a Game Boy. It sits in the, the option screen when you can choose what to do in the game. And you can choose to play, it's like a virtual console inside Stadium, so you can play Pokemon Red, Blue in the game, and you can play it faster speeds, uh, depending on what you've got unlocked. Um, and people are kind of theorizing that, you know, when hopefully, potentially, if they do release the classic GB games for the Switch, that'll be the time when there might be integration between those games and then Pokemon Stadium where it'll give an incentive, I think, as well. In my mind, at least, I think if we do get the classic games coming onto the Switch, like Pokemon Red, Blue and Yellow, it gives players an incentive to play through those games if you can, one, transfer them to, to home to transfer to new games and also to transfer to Pokemon Stadium as well because, you know, if you're really into Pokemon Stadium, you'll be like, I'm going to get pokemon red or i'm going to get pokemon yellow just to play through so i could have my own team on pokemon stadium and then you can do the same with gold silver crystal when pokemon stadium 2 comes out i'm just praying that's what happens because yeah otherwise you've really got nothing to play on pokemon stadium other than the mini games which are I, great we can play those online that'll be brilliant but the rental pokemon are trash i, ha mate. I haven't actually ever played pokemon stadium so why not, not I haven't got a lot of reference, but but it sounds like yeah. I'm not going to be playing it on the <laughs> Switch Online. 
Um, we play the mini games. We should play the mini games. The mini games are very cool. Talking about video games again. This is a weird tangent, but I'm going to go there anyway. Mm. Um, Australia is passing laws about. Um, this was on a tech show. I was just watching, but they're talking about um, Australia passing laws. Um, anything to do with gambling as like basically rated R, um, but like banning any games that or like putting an R rating on any games that have any kind of gambling in. And that includes loot boxes. And then they were talking about in the like original Pokemon games, the slot machines, yeah, the slots, they can get rated R just for the slot machines in Australia, which is <laughs> wild. crazy. They were talking about it. And in a way, yes, you really shouldn't be encouraging children to, to gamble, mm. I guess, which does make sense. But also it does seem a bit wild that they could just slap an R rate, R rate, rate on it. Um, that is rating wild. on it just because it has like you know one building in it where you can count when you can use some slots i think the, the, the arcades were in a lot of them weren't they were they in ruby sapphire is there slots in ruby sapphire i think there was some sort of i'm sure there was in the battle factory in emerald at least yeah so i'm sure there's some slot facility or something like that all these old classic Pokemon games slapped with an R8, and that is madness. It'd be everyone, wild. everyone always said they were just kids' games. Yeah, not anymore. <laughs> you know, they're for hardcore gamblers. Hardcore gamblers. So that is, yeah, that is it with Pokemon Stadium. So that'll be coming tomorrow, uh, the date of this pod going live, which is really exciting. So if you're excited for it, do let us know what your thoughts are. It is a, a, a bit annoying that the, there's no transferable pokemon at the minute but i don't know if that is going to be something that's set in stone i could see that potentially being something that gets integrated maybe later when they do announce because in my mind they're not going to say you can transfer pokemon in on it when they haven't announced the they're bringing the, the classic games to the switch they might not even be bringing any of the classic games to the switch but if they were they're going to sit on that information and then they're going to be like, oh, by the way, as well, with Red, Blue and Yellow being released on the Switch, you can now transfer Pokemon from these games to Pokemon Stadium 1 and Pokemon Stadium 2 with Gold, Silver and Chris. Do you know that sort of announcement? That would be hype. But I just, I just find it so weird, a company that cracks down so hard on emulation and running their games, you know, outside of the original console or whatever, you know, the fact that you know they they haven't they don't have these things in place yet, and yet they're still hot on it already. You they know, make it so hard, so hard <laughs> for to do actual anything. players to do anything. Yeah, and You're so right. it's just mm. like just just you have Pokemon has like one of the best back, back catalog of games in the entire world. You know, and I get it. The Switch Online is new, but it's not new anymore. You know, it's not it can't be hard to port the game files onto the Switch. Like, don't drag it out, like, over a gajillion. Just make make the Switch Online good, okay? Like, okay, you have a different angle. I know it's not as expensive of, you know, it's still, arguably, still not worth the money. Um, A lot of people could argue that Switch Online... The only reason I have it is to play online for Pokemon. Otherwise, yeah. I wouldn't buy it. Because yeah. you don't need to buy it to, to talk to people, because there is no way to talk to people. No. I mean, we talked about... How you can't even play Mario Kart together? You know it's ridiculous. When we when we had our Mario Kart spur on YouTube, yeah, you know, we had it was ridiculous to even try and like get into the same race together. Oh man, yeah. It's just I just I just don't understand the logic sometimes. It's crazy you know? when you think like how you know when you go back to the first Pokemon games and they were integrating these like. Uh, trading mechanics in a game that you hadn't really seen before, like trade with your friends between, and they had the link cables and stuff like that. And they were so at the forefront of wanting to be on this kind of multiplayer platform with their games. But they're so far behind now with anything to do with like, you know, anything it's probably, it's online. It's probably because they probably got really popular, right? And just stopped caring. I'd imagine that's what happened. Because mm. you think, as as a company, as we discussed a couple of weeks ago, they're worth so much money. Um, yeah, um, yeah, they make some questionable decisions. They are really far Maybe. behind as a console. They're they're ahead, but they're also really far behind on some of the stuff that actually really matters. It will be really interesting to see if the, the next iteration of the Switch, whether it be a Switch called, probably won't be called a Switch. They'll probably call it something else just because. Um, you know, whether it fixes a lot of those issues or whether they're just waiting, they're saving a lot of that stuff, 
gives you more incentive to buy it, which would be a bit of a dick move, but you know, it would kind of make sense. So we'll have to see. Um, There's a lot of talk on the DLCs as well. You know, these the the the, the DLC dates about that second DLC pack being in 2024. So it hits with the release of the new Switch, potentially. I was also reading people talking about um, them bringing back like a a uh, like a, a plus mode, uh, uh, like as as in you could have an additional save for it, like for every game where but the save is a little bit harder so you could play through again maybe the pokemon are slightly higher level or the trainers are harder or something that would be um, cool i was reading on reddit today or even just like have access to like you know just another playthrough if you wanted to do another one that would um, be amazing wouldn't it but then still have access to the other pokemon that you caught in the other playthrough yeah. just in case you wanted it um apparently it has a similar thing on black and white people were saying in the comments but i can't remember um but you know, I remember that. As we said, they kind of got lazy. It feels like they they take two they take two steps forward, one step back, or you know, one step forward, two steps back, whatever. It feels like with a lot of their stuff, you know, Sword and mm. Shield on paper is a great game. You know, I mean, you've seen how successful it's been. It's been, but it runs like doo doo, as we all know. Um, you know, I never had a lot of those. I didn't realize how the problems were that bad because I actually played most of my playthrough handheld. Didn't play it docked. As soon as I put it on docked, I was like, ah, oh, I get why people are moaning now. <laughs> you know? So it's just, they're just a weird company. They don't have to try it because they know they're going to, I mean, you just talking about Nintendo in general. I mean, the Mario movie, you know, debatably, have you seen I've it, heard it, it? I haven't seen it. I've heard it's, it's the better of the, um, game adaptation movies uh but you know it's made them like a billion pound you know like just just they just nintendo and bloody pokemon just they just they don't need money i mean if they want some they just release a new new set tcg oh, set yeah they just oh. print some more money there's there's a, there's a hundred million pound there we go how much does that cost to make Ten thousand pound. Oh, nice, nice I mean, just reprint an old set as well because everyone yeah, will, everyone will like that <laughs> they just make stuff up like they've the got that classic one set one. haven't they yeah. the classic set coming out yeah it's just reprint. It's just throw in some other cards yeah just, no one cares no one cares it's funny we'll just throw one rare card in in the entire world people go mad you know they can literally do whatever they want and people just go nuts for it I mean don't get me wrong some of the as we discussed some of the stuff in the new sets Japanese sets coming up oh, some of the artwork is amazing some of the art arts are very very nice yes um, the full art arts. Um, I've seen a lot of. I saw one today of the um, the streamer, uh, the streamer gym leader, the electric one. Um, let's see if I can find it already. But Iona. Yeah, Iona, like a full art one of that. Um, let me see if I can find it on the Pokemon sub. Nice. But, but yeah, I mean, uh, even this, the most recent set. Some of the cards I agree with you with the Scarlet and Violet one are actually really nice. Yeah, some of the full arts in that are super nice. Have you opened any? I haven't. You know, every time I buy stuff now, like sealed products, unless they're loose packs, mm. I just feel like so. That, oh, here we go. Wow, it's literally straight away. I'll send it to you on them. Send it over, mate. Bad boy on Twitter. Ooh. Look at that. That's nice, isn't it? Sick and image. There we go. I can pull it up for everyone to see. There we go. It's quite not nice, the best image, it? but it looks gorgeous. It's a nice card. It is a very nice card. It is a nice card. Yes, very nice. For very one nice. For the collectors. Yes, one probably everyone will go crazy about that. Another news as well. Moving on, mate. You've got the new seven star seven star terror raid now. No one knew it was coming. No one knew it was. No one had any idea what it was going to be. Yeah, and that'll be happening this Friday for the first phase and then obviously the following Friday for its second phase and we'll have another. I'm, I'm kind of excited about the uh, the next Spotlight Terror. The last two that they've done have been really good, like the Blissey and the Ditto. I was thinking like, about this the other day. I think it's going to be Herba Miska drops. Because oh, they've done, they've done that is IVs. A great call. They've done EV... 
EV can oh, sorry XB candies and terror shards. What what would make sense next? Herba Mystica. People go nuts if it's Herba Mystica, mate, because People there is no great way to farm Herba Mystica really in the game either. So that is a great shout. That is a calling great it now, shout, boys mate. and girls. On Sunday they will announce first. it. Heard yeah. it here first. Yeah, it'll be Sunday night midnight. What that is would a great be a, shout. A drop Herba Mystica. That's what I'm trying to think. Yeah, maybe Don Dozo. Yeah, yeah. Um. Or any one, one of the the the, the, yeah. um, the um what do they, what they Warden would, Pokemon or whatever? I wonder what Draw they would something. do. Yeah, because it's like let's select group of Pokemon that can drop all of the different Herbamistica, Mystica, but they might just do just do what they did with it, just a handful of Herba Mystica drops, mm. like with the Terra Shards, and you know, yeah, just any yeah. That be, oh, yeah, I'm calling it now. That is 100 percent what I'm going to do. That was a great shout. I like Big that a lot. Play. You know, they, they've and been doing that, the useful ones. And that would make sense as well before Pokemon Home comes out. Get everyone stocked up on all the things you need before home integration. Because I feel like this is the last seven star terror raid before we get Pokemon Home. Yeah, I, I like, think you're right. I think this is why they've been cramming them in to get through these. The Hisuian ones, especially like obviously the Hisuian Are there any stars. special dates coming up at all? No, but th we did get the, that announcement earlier um, in the, was it last month? The mid last month about the um, walking wake and the iron leaves raid issues, you know, with the bad egg that people had issues with. Mm -hmm. um, and they didn't specifically mention the, the save date glitches that had been happening, but they did say that there was going to be an update in late April to uh, patch over the issues that people had had with that bad egg. So you'd imagine after the 21st, the next raid will be the Walk and Wake Iron Leaves one. Again, they'll run with that update. So you're looking at probably, what's the 21st? So probably some that Friday the 28th will be when that event drops. Probably the 27th will be the update that week, that I would imagine. So maybe home compatibility is that week in April like going off kind of timelines with stuff, which would be very, very cool. And that would take mm. us into May, um, which would be good because then we got all the Hisuian Pokemon into Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Very exciting. All the other Pokemon as well that you can get access to. I'm excited to see what time Terra to do once home is out. Yeah. As we mentioned, there's scope for a lot of stuff. I think they have to do the Hisuian Pokemon, right? Because there's going to be a lot of players that haven't played Legends Arceus and yep. don't have the Hisuian Pokemon. Do. So they could do the Hisuian Pokemon one by one for the next few weeks, which would be really cool if they do that. Um, also, yeah, maybe maybe do something special with them. I doubt they'll do Zoroark because no, that's no, the really... kind of the mystery gift for the download and the DLC. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so they might do the rest of them. So... Yeah, I mean, they've done the Zoroark already, so it kind of hints that they probably will do the rest of them. be very cool, though, if they start dropping. And they might even do the Hisuian versions of the starter Pokemon. You know, like the Typhlosion, Decidueye, Samurai, as their Hisuian forms. Mm -hmm. oh, I didn't actually know there was... Just how, I haven't played Legends Arceus, really. Didn't Sacrilege. Even know there was, Sacrilege. Didn't even know there was a Hisuian <laughs> Decidueye. I was like, what? Well, it looks sick. <laughs> Mate, look I'm telling there. you now, for VG, okay, honestly, if if people thought that the Paradox Pokemon were bust or broken or strong, right, wait until we get access to the Hisuian Pokemon in competitive. They are Which busted. ones? Wh which ones are the bad There's ones? There's too many to go through in this episode. We could do a special episode on it if you want. I didn't realise there were that Pokemon many Hisuian Pokemon. Yeah, there's there's quite a few, mate. They, and they've got some broken moves and right. mate, they're going to be really strong and it's going to be really exciting because you know I'm a big fan of Legends Arceus. It's probably my number one game out of every Pokemon game. Um, I enjoyed it so I much. It. I need to play it at some point. It's just brilliant. Immersive. You've got to, you've got to play it with your headphones on or, or just you, the, the volume on. Just immerse yourself in the game. I it's thought brilliant. I would be all over brilliant. it because it's all it's gen it's like a gen four thing, right? So yeah. I was like, and the, yeah, the catching mechanics it. are different, battling mechanics are all different. And I heard on the grapevine that a lot of the, the battle mechanics and the training mechanics that were in that game were kind of like a pilot, test pilot alongside 
the mechanics that we saw we see in uh, Sword and Shield that will be maybe integrated. I mean, it, may, it makes you think, right? Because re- hope, realistically, the next Pokemon game, the main series Pokemon game that comes out, is going to be on the new new console. Let's yeah. just call it a new console now. Next iteration of the Switch, <laughs> which, w- given all the, this experimentation, that the argument, you know, why it's been running bad for so long, you know, the game could be awesome. You know, if they Legends have Arceus run so I mean, smoothly, mate. There's yeah, no, no that's what that. I'm saying. But yeah. you know, a combination of all the stuff that they've tried out, mm. it makes you think. You know, potentially, like maybe this was the end goal. You know, like when the next switch comes out, they <laughs> can do all this cool stuff. Yeah, really it'd be well. interesting if they do integrate the training mechanics, like the EVing, IVing from Legends Arceus into main series games because it's so simplified. How, how do you do it? Do you know what I miss? Right, I know it's this one is to like f- a- the the uh, the. I, I don't know what they call it. Is it e- EVs or something? I can't remember off the top of my head. Anyway, they run from 1 to 15 on every... They've got like four stats, I think. I think they run over four or five stats. I can't really remember. It's been such a long time since I actually looked at Pokemon Legends Arceus to know exactly. But anyway, they run from 1 to 15, I'm pretty sure. And every Pokemon, you just give them like grit, this grit that you get so easily anywhere. And you can feed them this grit and it boosts like that number from 1 to 15 if you use enough of it. And it's so easy to do. And there is nothing else to do. Once that Pokemon's stat is 15, that's it maxed out. And you can do that with every Pokemon very easily. And every stat. Sounds easy. It's very cool. I I must admit. I like it a lot. It's 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 relatively easy in, in Skull and Violet. Um, but I really miss, and I know it was it was a bit tire, tiresome, but the way you EV trained in X and Y with the punching bags and the mini games, it was actually so much fun. Like I know it was dumb, but like <laughs> it did make it fun, yeah. yeah. It was it was more fun. Um what, so what did they call it? Hyper training in that game, was it? I think it was something like that. But I just, just I even like I saw a clip of something, someone today. Just I was getting like hardcore X and Y flashbacks because that's when I really got into competitive Pokemon mm. with X and Y. And um, you know, I was just even like the the horde Pokemon when you would run into oh, hordes, the hordes were great, Pokemon. weren't they? Because you you could horde Pokemon for EV training as well. So that was like one of the easy easier ways to e- quicker ways to EV train. And um, yeah, I was just like, damn, I missed that game. Yeah. Hopefully yeah. they have something, something in future. If they br- it bring in that though, you know, integrate what they've done in Legends RC. I want Megas back. Bring back Megas. Well, we're gonna have to wait till the remake of X and Y, I think, mate, for that. So that'll be Gen that, Ten. That that's only Generation make... Ten. That's one generation away. It's not that long. That would actually make a lot of sense to, yeah. to save it for when they bring it back. Because yeah. obviously, if they bring it, if they do a remake, they're going to have to. They can't not do megas. Mm. They're doing it, so that would make a lot of sense. I think though, for that right, when they get around to Generation Ten, they can't do and they can't have a, a studio like Ilka making the the remake, right? Like they did with BDSP, right? Because they're going to need to integrate those megas into the main series games, right? So it can't be crap. So it can't be rubbish. Game Freak, listen. Nothing wrong why, with why did, they, why did they butcher <laughs> Gen 4, man? The Gen 4 remake. Why did they make it so bad? I enjoyed it, but yeah, it would have been, it could the have Gen been so much better. The Gen 4 so good. Yeah, I was actually uh, really looking forward to potentially playing a Gen 4 VG format. Oh, what, on, on BDSP? Could you have imagined? It would have been amazing, but I think that was a bit wishful thinking. They were never going to port over from Sword and Shield. They could have done that, you know, especially, you know, with the way they're going, if they run out of ideas, it's like the next season, if they don't, you know, just be like, yeah, we're just going to go play the remake. I don't just think like, they'll ever port away from the main series titles, though, now. You know, where we had, yeah, I you guess know, so. where we, we had like uh, back in the day, you know, you had um, Omega, uh, Ruby Alpha, Sapphire were like the oh, kind yeah, of add-on game, games right? yeah. but that was a main series title right so it just was an extension to that generation and mm-hmm. that's why we saw the vg kind of format go into those games whereas because it's developed by a, uh, a different developer, a second party you know ilka 
they're not going to stray. It's not classed as a main series when your flagship kind of uh, game is going to be like, well, it was Sword and Shield then, unfortunately, because there was so much like kind of heat for Dynamax and people not enjoying it and people want to change. And I think it would have been, I think a bit of been refreshing, but you know, you got to really think back to the baseline that, you know, it is an advertising tool for Pokemon using, and then they want to use their main game to advertise their product with. So like, it would be wild getting, a, a, I think my brain would explode getting an X and Y ring make, because I remember when it come out, like, I know it, like, obviously it makes sense. I do remember when getting, uh, to gen four games as a thing, but like, that was when I really got into Pokemon. So to think, you know, I never could have thought we'd be getting an X and Y remake in the future at any My point. God. And the yeah. thing that is, you know, potentially in the next, you know, three or four years, we'll be, we could be getting one. It will know? be, yeah. Although it's not actually that long away, is it? Because Gen 10 will be like, what, two years away now? This will and, be then, the year after. and then a year after that, you're looking at probably the remake. On the, on the, on the kind of same timeline that we work off at the minute, that's kind of what we look at. Because black yeah. and white's the next yeah, remake. One, if they next, stick yeah. to the remake, you know. So interesting. Exciting though. That one as well. Megas, bring them back. Bring them back. Another news. We've already mentioned EUIC will be happening this week. That's the European Championships uh for the play Pokemon. It'll be happening in London at the XL Arena in London. I will be there. Scott will be there playing. I will be there casting, commentating on the VG team just to reiterate I'll that. I'll be on stream every round. Um, it's going to be a great event. Make sure you're watching. Oh, yeah. Make sure you tune in. It'll Make be sure a very good event. Um, and there is going to also be a pop-up shop there as well. And I just had it. Yeah, pop-up shop. Pop-up Pokemon Center. Yeah, they had one at Worlds and it was Insane, it was so good, and they're having another one at EYC. Mate, this is and you can reserve your times now, sucking the money from your wallet. I spent Printing. 160 pounds, mate. <laughs> mate, I, I went around the first time because we got like because we were casting, so we got like to go in before it opened to the general public. I've still got my receipt, oh. I kept it because I spent so much money in the shop. Oh my god, you can't see it. I spent oh god. 180 pounds in the shop and i was like i need to keep that to remind myself of how stupid i was so. not to do it again hopefully i won't be doing that again you definitely will though we know we know <laughs> um yeah so you can you can actually go on and reserve a place to go into the shop now over the got bunch of time slots over the entire weekend running from the friday until the sunday and you can reserve a spot. It's free to reserve. You just need to uh, get a spot and then turn up. And uh, you'll be able to go in and grab yourself some Pokemon Center exclusive merchandise and some Pokemon goodies. Right, some of the stuff I had for Worlds was good. amazing. Oh, it was incredible, some mate. The, the, um, yeah. the jersey they made was really sick. I've got the jersey and then a couple of the other like T-shirt designs I had was awesome. So oh, this jacket. I don't know why it's down on the floor here, but this jacket was what I got. On. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. I love this jacket. This is really, yeah. it's like a reversible jacket with like. I have the, the pink. I have the, the pink pika. t-shirt. That yeah. stuff. Yeah, I have that and the socks to match with it. Yeah, it's a really nice jacket. But um, so yeah, they probably have some really cool stuff there. I went because we got round the first time and. Um, yeah, because you weird. can't see. You got in. You got to see it before everyone else, didn't you? Yeah, and uh, we went in with like like Lee and Hart, another big you know big big content creators. It was really cool, and I remember being at the the TCG desk where they got the counters. And I was like, look, and I was like, which one should I get? I was really keen on the Marnie one. I thought, I'll just get the Marnie one. Because it was like one per person. And Leon Hart just was standing right. Up. No, 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 he was standing right next to me. And I was like, turned to go away. And I was like, ah, oh, Leon Hart. Oh. <laughs> and I was like, a bit like, wow. And he was like, which one should I get? And I was like, definitely the Marnie one. But he was shooting a video and I've never seen the video. So I don't know if I was in that bit and I want to find out. Yeah. Yeah, I put um, myself up some of that as well because you could. They, they only let you pick up one a day, didn't they? So yeah, you could one get all person. four. Yeah, but you'd have to go in each day. Yeah, but I remember going around the first time and I got to the end where the checkout was, and I was like looking at my bag, and I was like, I, I, I have to go back and put stuff back. I was like, I cannot justify <laughs> spending this much money, and I literally went back and I put so much back, but 
I still spent like over 200 quid easy. I don't know how much it came to. It's brutal. I raised it for my brain. But I thought it was like a once in a, you know, lifetime at London. Did you say like a lot of the Pokemon Center, because they, obviously they have the main Pokemon Centers in in um, in Japan. And then mm. obviously they have the online ones. We have one now in the UK and they have one in the US. Um, but apparently the pop-up ones at Worlds haven't been that great. And so the fact that we're actually getting like, I'm hoping this one will be decent. I'd imagine it'd be similar to one we had Worlds this year. But previously they were like super small. And now we're getting these like a lot larger Larger pop up shops, mate. The ones back in the day were <laughs> two things. <laughs> there was not really any. Well, I mean, they had they the plushies had, were the only like explicit thing you could get. They always had big plushies, they had like t shirts, maybe a hoodie, um, but not very much. World like when we have our stuff. studio, we've got to get like one of the massive plushies to put in the studio for the pod. We've got to get a snow like right, some, some of the ones they had at the um. They were wild. Some of the ones that I think I have a picture of me with an arc, Nick, like laying next to an arc I was about nine. To say that arc it was nine huge. One. I was Insane. like, wow. I saw so many people walking out of those as well. I was like, man, you you guys are crazy. Yeah, I like the whale they were, like, one as well. Well, expensive. It wasn't like they were cheap. By the way. Nah, they <laughs> you're were. fishing out like you know hundreds of pounds for these massive plushies. I'm sure, they were getting like up to, upwards of three hundred. I remember in um, I have a picture when I went to the um, Pokemon Center in Osaka or something. I have a picture of me with like this massive beware. I picked it up. Oh, and I was like cool. hugging it. It's really sick. That is um, cool. Yeah. I just bought Good. a lot of small plushies. I got the the scissor, which was like you know the sit on plushie. That's really mm-hmm. cool. Um, I'd imagine they'll have well, they'll have lots of stuff. Let's um, let's get something special and do a giveaway when we come back after the next one. Of mm-hmm. a special plus you that we find there, and we'll give it, we'll do a giveaway for it. That'll be nice for our views. Excellent. Idea. For our viewers. Yeah. We had some really nice comments again recently. I had a text from a friend saying they really loved the pod. Um, a new friend as well. I was like, yeah, enjoy it. Really enjoyed listening to it. Um, keep it up. You know, we really appreciate anyone that is still watching. We do. Yeah. Um, we do. You know, this is something that we're both really excited about as a podcast because, you know, we just, it's just great we just get to hang out and talk about Pokemon and that's you know we both love Pokemon so much and it's a great way to connect with people as well so so much <laughs> there's just so much Pokemon stuff that happens all, no, all, all um, the time so it's just like yeah. no, it's, it's, it's just quality yeah. it's quality and we do appreciate all of you yeah so um, the next thing that I've got on the list mate for this week is something that I'm just going to let you lead on and I'll just I'll just chip in when needed uh, it's about an energy drink. I'm going to throw it up on the screen. Oh, yes. Here we go. You sent this over. And this so Mon- is- Monster have been, uh, they've been a bit cheeky recently. So they, they've been, um, so they've been coming after some companies. They, they basically claimed they had, they owned the copyright for the word monster <laughs> for everything, basically. And um, I can't, what, I can't remember the company. They come, I think they come after, I think it says it in here. They They come after a small game company that used the word monster in their um in their game title or something and obviously this sparked up loads of controversy because they're like monster hunter screw pokemon uh and apparently um they they have tried to come after pokemon um to claim claim because obviously pokemon is short for pocket monsters right so they've tried to claim <laughs> that pokemon that have you know stepped on their infringement infringement copyright um which is just this is actually insane this, this isn't like an april of fools is it? no this april is fools. real so it happened recently because they, they did nuts. it they, they did it to a uh, yeah, this monster, a small small uh, indie monster strike indie game yeah and so obviously that sparked all this discussion and apparently they have come after Pokemon in the past the claim that they have the name the rights to the name monster which is insane like you can't Copyright, like that's like me saying I'm going to copyright the word A. No one else is ever allowed to use it, otherwise I'm going to charge you money. Like copyright works for like the naming of things, not you know, but like you can't. It's like the. It's like trying to someone trying to copyright the word the. It's just it's just like the nuts. water now. Yeah, yeah. Anything, Every yeah. everything belongs to me. That is and going after Pokemon. 
That is a brave move. No, they lost. They obviously did. Of course did. they did. They didn't go anywhere. <laughs> so, um, do you reckon it's just a PR spin? Just so to get their name X out and y, there. X, Y, and Sun and Moon. They complained about the name. It just seems it's, so weird. It feels what like are you trying big, your luck with? You're just going to yeah, lose. It feels like a PR spin, though, doesn't it? Just to get your name out there. But it's a very, a very weird way to do it. A very weird way. And it just seems so ridiculous, you know? Monster Beverage Corporation argue that the company's brand presentation in Japan, the series uses both the full title Pocket Monsters and the abbreviation Pokemon, could cause people to mistakenly believe that the product was related to Monster Energy Drinks. I mean, come on. <laughs> really? You know, it would be pretty <laughs> stupid to get like that mixed up. Pocket it's monsters. actually oh, insane. Yeah, the drink, they must have made a game. Oh, yes, yes. There must oh. be a collaboration. Yeah. I mean, no it's... similarities with the branding or coloration on nope. the branding. It's all just that that one word. Yeah. <laughs> Monster Munch. Ah, oh, I don't know if any of you for, uh, uh, viewers that from the board or car, out the way. It's a UK deep car, right? Yeah, that is it. It's a UK uh, brand of uh, crisps or um, chips. Chips, yes, and uh, yeah, that could be another one. They've been around since forever, though. Monster oh, Munch, that my mo- they're they so the- strong, they're horrible. <laughs> yeah, no, they taste nice, but they stink like the hell, spa- man. They did this. Uh, no, the flaming hot ones are good, man, but I don't really eat crisps. No, they taste anymore. good. They just smell oh, like the pickled, pickled onion, onion ones. Mate. Taste oh, so nice. God. They stink, stink, man. Nasty, they mate. Put in those flavorings. Mate, probably acid. Just full up, straight up acid. Straight up. Monster acid. <laughs> Monster acid, baby. Yeah. It's crazy. But Monster are a weird company, aren't they? Yeah, so, I mean, it's just ridiculous. Um, just another thing quickly. I got confused here, but um, it's a bit of a... It's not massively important, but there was... Um, so, Japan... So, Japan circuit, as we've discussed in the past, is super super different or just the Asian circuit is super different for competitive play um, so they have their own stuff they have it's the only Asia is like the only place where they still have national events and so Japan's Nats is coming up and they've released this artwork I've just sent it to you on Twitter I'm and it looks it. insane yeah, absolutely definitely... gorgeous I thought it was world stuff and I was like about to go mental but this is I hope we get similar artwork like this for Worlds because this is gorgeous, man. It's, it's very cool. It's so it? nice. I think we've got the artwork for Worlds, haven't we? Have we? I Probably. Think stuff, I think there's stuff done, yeah. That is very cool, isn't it? Yeah, just the colours. Just, just Love it so yeah. much. It's cool. Like The Japanese circuit is very cool. I do like it because they have the online course. So the next... So there'll be, I think, four online tournaments, and they all act as qualifiers for. Uh, are they still active. best of one? Uh, they are until I think top cut, and then I think it goes to a best of three. Mm-hmm. So I think all the prelim- 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 preliminary rounds are, I think. Um, but yeah, it's a cool circuit, and you have to get in the top percentile of players in the ICs to get. Um, a place at the national championship it's really hard to qualify that's when you know yeah the, the japanese people that are any or any asian players that are at the events they're good at the game I mean, yeah they're very just, good they're just yeah. different gravy they're yeah. different gravy when it comes to pokemon yeah and it's um their formats they, are like super different as well right because in terms of like the like the way like obviously at the moment you know flat is very common and all this you know palafin tinglu all these things but like, they'll just have completely different they like, definitely have different game. trends and stuff, yeah. Yeah, it's, and if you it's kind of keep wild. an eye on like the, they still have quite a, they have a really strong grassroots scene as well, you know. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Um, but you can keep an eye on 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 their, some of their grassroots scenes that are like published on Twitter and, and certain accounts publish the results from those, so you can kind of keep track of of where things are going in relation to those, and it is is very different, but it is very um it does influence the West metagame a lot and it still does, you know, I mean, a lot of the teams that we saw in series two were built by Japanese players and they influenced a lot of those top performing teams um, in series two just doesn't really get talked about too much, you know, um, but yeah, well, still, again, 
yeah, I mean, unfortunately, because because of the language barrier, there's not much crossover between. Obviously, you know, a few, you know, quite a few players can Asian players can speak English. You know, say so can speak very good English and stuff like that. But you know, there's just the numbers. I think we just outnumber them, so there's not much crossover. Um, obviously, loads of Japanese content creators speaking Japanese, so you know, it's a lot. It's a lot harder for like you know even people like myself you know people like myself to just to go and listen to them and enjoy their content so mm. you don't really get that insight from them as prevalent as you do from like you know the west yeah and they're so, still very kind of heavy on blogs you know like blog posting things like that is where they kind of put out you know i mean like uh what was the team that Renya put out with um Suica? They put a team out, and that was one of the top performing teams in Series Two for us over here in our regional scenes. Um, I can't remember the team off the top of my head, but yeah, you still got that heavy influence. But a lot of it's just not in the right places to go, I guess, if you want to be inspired by the Japanese players. But they're very good. Their 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 systems, like you say, extremely hard to qualify from. So the players are always going to be, you know, the World Championships are always going to be are quality. very good. Uh, it'll be interesting this year's world championships you know they're gonna they're they're gonna be they gotta win. desperate to win to win yeah they are not gonna hometown, want baby. anyone else coming in and winning the tournament in their hometown and nice. when was the last time a japanese player won was it um the two japanese 2019 the yeah 2019 i think wasn't it yes it was you didn't have one Ryusuke versus someone was it was that when we uh, My Japanese n- knowledge of players no, is bad. I can't remember the name off the top of my head. I should know. Let's not butcher it, but it was Lunala Groudon, though. Yeah, sure. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but yeah, extremely hard circuit. I'd love to. I'd love the opportunity to live out in Japan for a year when I was like playing, like really hardcore playing, and just play their circuit for an entire year. Like play all the grassroots scenes and then play their national. You're fully immerse be, yourself. Yeah, it would be such a great experience. Can't do it now, but I mean, it would have been it would have been the dream. Dream Any come true, baby. Anybody GC players out there, you know, get your bags packed. Tell your mum you're off to Japan for a year. Go do yeah. it. <laughs> bye bye. Just like in the Pokemon games. <laughs> yeah, bye, mum. Bye. But yeah, yeah. no. It'd be great yeah. if we have any uh, Japanese viewers as well. Tell us, tell us more about the circuit. Yeah, I did. It really interests me. It really does. It's um, yeah. So we'll see. We'll see what happens at EUIC. I'm sure there's going to be uh, a lot of different nationalities representing their countries this weekend so it'll be uh it'll be good to see what comes out who wins who does well what teams come out because there's going to be some spice i think this weekend yeah i've got a bit of spice myself so a little old, bit of spice so old, old spice old spice yeah <laughs> so uh <laughs> sorry dousing mate. myself before the tournament <laughs> yeah. you could be the best smelling player there <laughs> and Dan, what's that smell? It's just, it's just Scott. Dan be like those old spice ads with that dude with a towel. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Um, Excellent. I don't know where we're going after this, though, mate. I think that's pretty much everything that we were going to cover this week. We are going to try and do a live pod, not a live podcast. We're going to do a podcast at EUIC. So that should be hopefully next week's podcast, which is going to be really exciting. And we'll try and do. Uh, in the hall we'll try and do different locations for it all uh, throughout the weekend so yeah we'll see how that goes and uh, Mm -hmm. that should be a lot of fun I did get some um, you know casters have special pins this is an exclusive here I did get myself some new pins let's take them out should I take them out of the packet so you can see them properly what what, what Pokemon are they oh mate because you normally have to you have to wear them on the suit right yeah it's going to be a hot it's a bit of a homage to last week last week's episode Oh, LeChonk. Oh, let's go. My laptop one is so cool. This one. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> I had to get them. I was like, yes, yes, this will be. Yes. So that'll be like one for each day then. Excellent. You know? So be good. Sneak peek. Wow. Well, we didn't get any game breaking. We were uh, DLC news, which we thought we might get. Nothing. this week but there's been a lot of rumour leaks and stuff like that but um, maybe we leave that for another week well, we might have a good guest 
for talking about league stuff. Oh yeah, we spoke about. So maybe in a couple of weeks we'll uh, we'll go we'll go over it once we have a bit more. I feel like once I feel like once home is out, I feel like that will that will lead. There's a lot of um, yeah. scope for the DLC, at least for the rumors, because you know. See what that you can kind of get an idea of what Nintendo wants to do then, especially with like the raid Pokemon and stuff. Mm, so I agree, yeah. Especially if the raid Pokemon are linked to the DLC, as uh, we pointed out last week, possibly. So, but yeah, no, that's yeah. that's uh, and masks. That is pretty much it for the week. Um, Did you want you me want to pull s- any 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 of these out? Did you want me to pull anything? When I was at my parents, I found my childhood treasure box and found all my old Pokemon stuff. Give, so give him a quick, managed, give him a quick view in. I managed you know? to, uh, I managed oh, to man. find all the stuff, all, all my original stuff. My very first Pokemon game ever, Pokemon red. And I now have it in my possession. I'm going to actually, uh, I don't know. No, I won't start a new playthrough. I'll keep the one there, but this, these stickers on the front, you, some people are going to be like, you've ruined the box. But I'm not ever going to sell this. This is like mine. So that's actually the team that I used to used to run. If I can get it to focus in on that box there. So yeah, Miles Sack, Alakazam, Chansey, Ride On, Execute, Zapdos, and Slow Slowbro. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. That was the team. So there's that Pokemon Yellow. Oh my! This is quality. Pokemon Silver. Hmm. And did we oh, talk no. about it on the? Did we talk well, we'll about it? We'll save it. No, save save that for the different episode. Do you reckon? Uh, we just... I, did, we, did we talk about it? I don't know if we talked about the the Celebi. We did. I'm sure we did. You this definitely... is the copy. This is a copy of Crystal. This is the copy of Crystal that I got from that tournament with the Celebis on on the cart itself. And I have. I also found. Which I was showing Scott before the pod. This is just a nice little way to end it out. A nice little way to end out. Also found the certificate. This is just a little touch of history. The certificate of authenticity of the Celebi on the actual card as well. My so that is a banging that is certificate. That is special certificate. Can't Love to see it. I can't believe I kept it. Your Celebi ID number zero two zero one six four. Now I don't know whether that's the ID of the actual Pokemon or not. I don't know. I'll have to have to check. But there's some there's some history for you. And I did I want to show you guys this. I don't know if anyone's ever seen this before. This is weird. I thought when I pulled it out of the box, I really didn't read it as a kid, I don't think, at all. Or I did and I gave up. But it's it's kind of like a walkthrough guide, but it's written as a novel. So the whole thing is like a novel of gold and silver but it's like playing through the game but it gives you all the how how the game's actually played in a novel it's weird you can maybe read it one week it's quality we've got the live performance to do and then we've i got saw the i saw i found another time. upload of that no i no i found someone i think i sent it to you that made a documentary yeah, about yeah. the live performance yeah that's, that's wild we need to do a we special on live that. we'll do a stream we'll do a stream yeah. like I said. down the rabbit hole with that excellent that well good well, that's about that's about it, mate. I think is it. Yeah, thank you very much for listening, guys. Um, I'm really excited for next week's episode, recording it at, at, at EUIC. I think will be really cool. If any um, of you that are attending EUIC as well, and you see us at the venue, please come up, say hello. Don't be shy. And if you'd like to get on the pod and maybe answer a few questions, let us know about your weekend experiences while you're there then we would love to uh, would love to have you on and uh, get your perspective of how you're enjoying the event and stuff like that. Yeah, pretty much. So, um, do you want to call it there? It's not dragging us off too long. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I mean, we're normally really bad for dragging right. it on. We'll go on a lot of other tangents and everything, and I'm doing it right now. All right, let's end the stream. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. <laughs> we'll see you at EUIC if you're there. And um, yes, that is all for this week's episode. That is everything. Thank you so much, Scott. Bye. Good luck at pleasure. UIC, mate. Oh, and mate. Uh, thank everyone you. else, thank you so much for tuning in. See you later. We'll see you on next week's episode. Bye bye. Bye bye. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day.